Hi everyone, it's uh, really nice to be here with you. Uh, I'm gonna talk with Mark Lequit, who is a member of the Chikungunya Task Force for the... Uh, uh, so it's gonna be really interesting to listen to you talk about this virus. So it's really nice being here with you. Hi Mark. Thank uh, you, I know you've worked with Listeria for a long time, so what do you think uh, are your main motivations to start working with a virus instead of working keep working with the bacteria. So we actually continue to work with, uh, with Listeria yeah. and uh, as you may know this bacterium has a tropism for the placenta mm -hmm. and is transmitted to the fetus and as well as to the central nervous system. So this bacterium is able to cross host barriers and uh, since 10 years as you probably know Chikungunya virus has emerged as a major uh, uh, arbovirus uh, globally and has been associated, also rarely, but associated with cases of neonatal infection, associated with CNS disease, as well as with CNS disease, although this is rare, in uh, patients with comorbidities and in the elderly. So we thought working on, on a model pathogen that is Lyseria, we could apply our expertise to uh, new public health threats and uh, that's why we uh, started working on, uh, on chikungunya okay. virus. So talking about uh, congenital infections, do you believe that chikungunya virus is going to change in such a way as Zika virus did, so the infections get worse through the time? So um, there is a big difference between uh, chikungunya virus and uh, Zika virus. So first one is an alpha virus, the other one is a flavivirus. And uh, based on experimental data that have been published as well as uh, clinical data, uh, it seems uh, that Zika virus has a specific tropism for the placenta and is able to cross this barrier and infect the fetus during uh, its development. Whereas for chikungunya, the placenta is a real barrier, the virus doesn't get across it unless there are breaches. So this yeah. is only towards the end of the pregnancy and around uh, delivery that the virus may uh, cross and infect the, the fetus and lead to, to CNS disease. We don't know whether this is something that is stable or is something that is going to change, but it's, I would say, unlikely based on previous examples that the virus is going to, be, is going to completely change its uh, cell tropism and tissue tropism. So if I was to uh, say my uh, to, to bet, I would not uh, bet for a change of, of tropism for chikungunya virus. Okay, uh, there is a huge outbreak of chikungunya virus uh, going on right now in Brazil and uh, it seems to be happening after the Zika outbreak. Yeah. The, do you believe that this uh, effect is going to uh, be seen in other countries like Mexico for example? Uh, we had a large outbreak last year and this year uh, the number of cases is really low, so could this be happening in other countries? So we don't know where, whether there are any interactions between these two virus and, and, and their vectors and how one uh, virus may have an impact on the other one. What is clear is that in 2013, that is before Zika uh, emerged in, in, uh, in the America, uh, chikungunya was there in uh, the Caribbean and then it propagated to um, uh, Florida a little bit to uh, Central uh, America and then South America. In Brazil there is a specific uh, situation where two uh, lineages of the virus co-circulate. One that is from the Asian lineage, that is the one that has been uh, that has emerged uh, since 2013 in, in the America. And this uh, virus is uh, propagated by, uh, by Aedes aegypti, the same vector as for uh, Zika. Whereas the ECSA strain that is um, uh, emerging in Brazil is most likely also uh, uh, transmitted by um, Aedes aegypti, but could be, provided that mutation would occur, be uh, transmitted by um, Aedes albopictus. For now, as far as I know, but I'm not an expert on this, the mutations that are associated with an increased transmission 
an increased competence of um, Aedes albopictus for the for chikungunya virus are not present in the virus that circulates in Brazil. Uh, whether the, the fact that now we are seeing more cases in Brazil uh, after the Zika wave, let's say, I'm not sure it's linked. It's probably um, the concomitance of two emergent virus in, in, on a new continent. Okay, uh, you've done a lot of research on uh, antivirals and vaccines. So how far do you think we are from getting a vaccine uh, to prevent chikungunya or an antiviral to treat the infection? So personally, I haven't worked on, on vaccines, but there has been a lot of uh, efforts on this field. And I would say um, generating a protective immunity based on neutralizing antibody against this virus should not be a huge challenge. And there have been many attempts, both in uh, mice as well as in non-human primates, uh, to test uh, different constructs that have been uh, generated which are uh, attenuated vaccines, VLPs, vaccines uh, derived from measles, backbone and many other examples. And um, all of these seem to work. The question is whether there is room for generating a new vaccine, commercializing a new vaccine, having a market for this. This is far from my expertise, but because we have these waves of, of chikungunya um, outbreaks and then for many years in those affected areas, the, the virus won't circulate. The issue of, of, of the market is, is certainly a big one. So I think it's probably the main uh, limiting factor, but it uh, should be possible. And there are uh, trials underway, first phase um, two trials to, to um, generate a vaccine. Regarding antivirals, uh, I think we, we need to be realistic uh, for now, uh, for arboviruses, there is no uh, available efficient antiviral therapy that is being av available. Um, this is possibly due to the fact that those viruses uh, replicate to high level and in order to be efficient you would need to have a very potent antiviral. So we've been working um, on chikungunya virus and trying to better decipher the cell biology of the replication uh, by different approaches one being uh, by knocking down by sRNA uh, all the genes one by one of the cell of the host cell and looking for proviral and antiviral uh, factors and if you knock down the proviral factors um, that may uh, lead to uh, an antiviral effect now um, based on, on the results we obtain in collaboration with colleagues in Germany, Thomas Mayer uh, and others, uh, we uh, identified signaling pathways in which these proviral factors are involved and for which there are drugs that may interfere with the signaling pathways which are necessary for the, for, for the application of the virus. So there are drugs uh, available that we tested uh, in vivo in the mouse model. For some of them, these are drugs which are already commercialized in, in human medicine. So they have a, an, an effect in vivo, uh, alone or combined, which is great, but it's, uh, it's, a, uh, it's too uh, early uh, to say that this should be used in, in a clinical context. First, because their uh, antiviral effect is uh, somewhat modest. Uh, and when you have uh, 10 to the 8 um, uh, particles per ml of blood, you need to have a very potent antiviral. And second, it's, it's not very clear who should receive those treatments. Should it be like the general population? Should it be the ones who are um, um, potentially going to develop a severe uh, disease like the elderly and the neonates? We can uh, discuss about this, but I want to stress that for now we don't have like a clear uh, antiviral that, that is a lead for further uh, development in the clinics. Okay, uh, and just to end uh, this interview, what would be your recommendations for Mexican people uh, in terms of research to be done, uh, especially in a country where chikungunya virus is an endemic virus right now? So, what would you suggest for Mexican researchers to focus on chikungunya? So Mexico is a big country uh, implying that there can be many people working on the research field both on the basic uh, field and on the more translational and, and, and biomedical field. I think both of these uh, aspects uh, are good investment for a country like Mexico 
who, as we've seen over the past years, has been uh, exposed to two uh, important emergencies um, on top of, of dengue circulating there. So certainly arboviruses in general are a priority uh, for, for, for research here. Um, I would say that regarding chikungunya, uh, although some things have been done, many, many things remain unknown. There is a lot of knowledge regarding uh, alpha virus replication, but precisely how the virus replicates is not well known and well understood. So there is like long-term research that, that should be done and conducted on this topic. Then uh, there is the whole uh, issue of uh, the host response. We know that innate immunity, adaptive immune system are important, but precisely what are the specificities of the host response uh, to chikungunya and how this uh, prevents or favor the, 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 the inflammation associated with the infection, such as joint symptoms, is not really fully understood. There are hypotheses, but there is a lot to be done. Um, of course, then there is also the animal model, so we have mouse models, we have non-human primate models, but these are not ideal models. They need to be refined to, 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 to look for specific questions. So that's for the basic uh, field. For the more applied field, I think what we are missing are uh, detailed human data associated with the infection, such as biomarkers, such as uh, precise understanding of the viral kinetics, where the virus is and how it replicates, how it is cleared, um, does it really persist in some tissues at, at, the state, at the stage of infectious viruses or at the stage of just uh, antigen that are accumulated. Uh, this would require some uh, sampling of tissues. Of course, this uh, requires to be met uh, in, in a context of, of, of tight regulation and you don't want to, to make biopsies in patients that uh, otherwise are doing uh, okay just to to see where the virus is. But this is some, something which is critically missing and given the large population that you have, maybe there would be ways to, to couple research and, and, and care to patients. Okay. Thank you very much, Mark. My it pleasure. Really nice talking to you. My pleasure.